Welcome back, everybody. Uh, my name is Mark Pignataro. I'm the managing director of the Berkeley Global Jazz Institute, and it's my great pleasure to uh, present our first presenter of the afternoon, our student, Tomer Sadat. Thank you. Thank no, you. wait, wait. Just please clap for him. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, going to, I'm going to read the bio now. Please hold your clap. Tomer Sadat is an Israeli French drummer and composer. In addition to refining his artist, artistry as a percussionist, Sadat devotes much of his time to the piano, composing pieces that are influenced at their core by French classical music as well as various other traditions. He attended the Center for Jazz Study, Israel Conservatory, Tel Aviv's joint program of the New School New York and the Jerusalem Academy of Music and dance, studying jazz performance. He has performed in several festivals in Israel, including Jaffa Jazz, Red Sea Jazz, and Tel Aviv Jazz. He also volunteered as a private music teacher at the Kuma School for Children with Learning Deficiency and will be part of the BGI teaching staff at the Newport Jazz Festival this summer and also uh, we traveled together to Novi Sad in Serbia and he did an amazing job. Please welcome Tomer Sadat. Thank you, Marco, for this uh, wonderful introduction. I'm really excited to be here today and uh, present my project to you. Thank you all for coming. Um, so at the beginning of the year, I was really clueless as to what I was going to present. I had multiple ideas and I had a routine of coming up with an idea, um, uh, submitting a proposal paper, and then having th second thoughts and completely rethinking uh, my project. And that happened multiple times. Um, then I tried thinking a bit more generally, what, what do I want my project to actually be about, to have in it? And then I realized I wanted something that would really feel personal on the one hand, and on the other, I wanted something that would really be representative of my experiences this year at the BGJI. So I thought about how the first thing that really struck me um, this year was how diverse the program is. We have people from the Philippines, from Poland, we have people from Australia, just to name a few. Um, and, and we get to, to share our own musical cultures and learn from others uh, about their musical cultures. Uh, but then how do I make it feel personal? So Israel is a melting pot of cultures. Uh, Jews immigrating from all over the world uh, to this small piece of land, and, um, and so there's a huge diversity. My family itself uh, is extremely diverse, it comes from a lot of different places, and so I decided to dedicate uh, a composition or an arrangement for each one of these uh, musical cultures of my origins. And at the same time, I wanted to keep a cohesive and personal sound all across. So I'm gonna start talking about Poland and Romania, uh, where my father's uh, parents come from. I decided to group them together uh, because um, both my grandparents uh, were exposed to Eastern European Jewish music uh, in their youth. And uh, Eastern European music at large has a lot of common uh, tones between the, the different Eastern European countries. So the first song is an arrangement of uh, Abraham Eliyahu Kaplan's uh, prayer, and this is what it sounds like. Um, so uh, Avram Eliyahu Kaplan is from Lithuania, and this is a melancholic song that deals with the pondering of an agonized soul, seeking meaning and purpose as well as with the longing for God. Uh, the melody was adopted from a Russian folk song. So I really wanted to keep the, the simple melody and decided to follow my ear hearing certain harmonies over it. I created counterpoint lines influenced mainly by assignments I produced uh, for Bruno Raberg's uh, composition class, which dealt a lot with counterpoint. Oh. And this is what.
gonna move to the B section. Morocco. Now, uh, thank you. Uh, now, my mo my mother's uh, parents are from Morocco. For they grew up in Meknes, uh, surrounded mainly by Andalusian uh, music. Um, so, uh, during the project, I listened to a lot of music from the Maghreb, uh, Andalusian and Gnawa music. Through uh, and through reference of my grandparents uh, gave me, I came across the music of Maurice El Medioni an Algerian Jewish pianist and composer. Uh, Maurice was the first piano player to integrate the music uh, into piano playing, which really uh, stood out to me and attracted me. Uh, listening to his album, Piano Oriental, uh, the following piece significantly stuck with me for its melodic content, and so I started building upon it. So this is uh, Chucha Ya Chucha by Maurice El Medium. I took the first part of the tune, which is sort of an A, and then the B that just, we just heard right now, uh, section, and then I worked preserving the melody and adding development on top of it. There's also a pedal point that's not present in this recording, but in the original recording is, uh, and I integrated that as well. For the rhythm, I took the Shabi rhythm um, from the Moroccan tradition, a variation of it, uh, which is, it comes from the Shabi genre of North Africa. A common uh, traditional constellation for playing this rhythm is made up of bendir, darbuka, and kaka. And this is what uh, this uh, rhythm sounds like. So this is what we're seeing here. So then, uh, looking for further variation on the rhythm and to challenge myself, I decided to make a transformation to 15 eighths. Um, I felt like, uh, it, this, this has felt like five, eight, uh, five, five fours throughout most of the piece, um, if we're talking in triplets, and then I integrated the piano part uh, right here. Um, so this is my piece right here. So right now, we're he hearing an intro uh, with the, the pedal point right before uh, the A section.
So now we're at the lute solo, and then later we're gonna go to the beat. Next up, we're going to move to France. Thank you. So uh, my mom was born in, in Morocco, but soon moved to France, uh, where she spent most of her childhood. That made her become deeply, deeply connected to Western European culture and art. Uh, with me spending a year in Paris and visiting regularly, uh, and having a French mother, of course, um, I really connected to that part of my identity. On top of that, I grew up hearing Western classical music at home. Um, and so this tune, uh, in this tune, France was a beacon for Western European classical music. Um, a bit early on, I, I used to, to take uh, piano lessons. And I was studying this piece here by Johann Sebastian Bach, little prelude in C minor. At the same time, my mother was playing Solfeggetto by C.P.E. Bach. Uh, and I didn't study the piece, but I did toy around with it. And playing with these two, uh, these two pieces, uh, my fingers kind of went a certain place, and this composition was uh, formed. Lastly, uh, we're going to go to Israel. Thank you. So this is the birthplace of my father and myself. Um, but more than just representation of representing Israel, this is a representation of myself growing as a musician through uh, Tel Aviv, Jerusalem, and now the States, as well as my, my, uh, the accumulation of my experiences and influences developing as an individual in the melting pot of Israel. So um, this piece, it's worth mentioning, was very much influenced by Vishay Cohen, the Israeli bass player, and his compositions, uh, which lines are often based on a set or changing rhythmic ostinato, including um, lin uh, linearity and odd meters, as well as lyrical melodies on top. Uh, the piece has transformed over time. I started composing in Israel, and I, for now, it's, it's where it is at right now um, after having worked on it here. Um, and um, so the first thing I did was create uh, the piano part, uh, creating a rhythmic ostinato in 13 eighths. 
So it would be one two three one two one two three one two one two three one two three one two one two three one two one two three one. And then um, increasingly, I filled the the rests in between this rhythmic ostinato with bass notes. Um, I added interludes to break the harmonic mo monotony and add a different atmosphere. Later on, I constructed a lyrical melody on top to contrast the mathematical nature of the piano part and have the audience be able to connect emotionally. Later, here in the, at the BGJI, discussing the fine balance between repeated and newly introduced material with Danilo Perez and Bruno Raberg, I embedded more vocal parts into the piece, gradually denser, more complex, and emotionally intense, which amplifies uh, the sense of development and expansion throughout the piece. A short bass solo, uh, we're gonna get in and out of it real quick.
Thank you. So my takeaways on, on this project, um, I feel like I definitely deepened my knowledge uh, about my different roots and their musical cultures. My first experience, this is my first experience recording in a professional studio as a leader. And I gained a lot of insight for future projects. Um, I definitely grew aware of how much, how such a study of one's roots can benefit in enriching one's musicality. As for the next steps, um, I want to research these, research these musical cultures on an even deeper level, and while here I presented every origin separately, I hope to form a cohesive sound containing elements from each. Um, also, I would like to present this project in schools and hopefully inspire young individuals to explore their own ancestry. Thank you. Thank you, Tomer. Wonderful presentation. And uh, I didn't mention that your advisor is Bruno Robert. Bruno Robert. And uh, your committee member is Terry Lynn Carrington. And uh, I'm going to pass the microphone to Terry. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, great, great job. I mean, your presentation was spot on. Thank you. You, you spelled my name wrong, but other than that, it's Did I? spot on. Oh. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. I have one of those names where that happens. Um, yeah, I mean, the music is amazing. You know, your drumming sounds really great on there. I feel like I have seen your growth um, over the year. Um, and your composing is really um, advanced in, in many ways. Um, I think you know that you know you have a future with the direction that you're going. You seem very clear to me uh, that you're going down a path that that's something that people want to hear, and you know there's a community for it. And mm -hmm. I think it's great. Um, I would love to have heard you explain a little more about the connection between all of the pieces, other than I understand that it's your own like cultural connection. Mm -hmm. But musically, like what threads kind of so, kept coming up, you know, I didn't really yeah. hear you talk about that. So uh, this year I decided to really try to dig into each one of these roots uh, separately. And my hopes are that um, the next step would be to find exactly these, you know, these common, like dig even deeper and be able to have all these elements in my sound together. Um, but you're, you're talking about common notes, common tones in between each one of the genres. Not common tones, just, just you know, just what, what things did you, you know, find that connected, you, you know, you to all of it that made a connection between all of it? Like, were they melodic, you know, were they, I, don't, I just did, I, it just feels a little separate, you mm -hmm. know, and I'm wondering what you took away that made it, like you say, oh yeah, that's here, that's here, that's here, that's here. And now I see why, you know, who I am through all mm -hmm. of these different influences. You yeah. understand what I'm saying? Not exactly. <laughs> okay. I don't know how else to say it. Maybe Danilo has a better way. Mm. I'm, you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> so when we get to him, he'll, okay. <laughs> he'll say it better than me. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, I just mean like, you know, you're going to discover something in each of these areas, mm -hmm. and I, I, would, I was looking for you to draw a conclusion. Out of each of uh, the that, searches of each Well, other. a conclusion that connects them all, other than as your cultural background. Mm. You know, a musical con conclusion, you know, a musical connection somehow, but maybe you didn't find one. I would one. have to think about that. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Maybe you didn't find one. I, I would have to think that there is one, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, I would have to think about that. Yeah, yeah. okay. Um, I would love to have heard also the uh, other Bach piece, like you played one example and oh, not the other. Oh, right. Um, Just yeah, yeah. I forgot. Since to. we were, since you were talking about the two of them, or, well, I mean, okay. <laughs> okay, but now I don't really remember your piece, so it's like <laughs> it doesn't make as much sense to me now. <laughs> uh, but. Um, 
You know, and the biggest thing, though, I just you know want to say the music is great. Your composing is outstanding. Um, oh, there's one more thing actually on the uh, fourth piece. Yes. You wrote it in thirteen eight. Yeah. And I know that you really feel that it's that. Mm-hmm. But for me, it's just the bigger beat is really obvious. Yeah. And to me, it's it's like. A, I understand it's based on that rhythm, but because it goes over the bar line, because of how you phrase the melodies, yeah. it feels like six and seven. Mm-hmm. Yeah, to, I mean? to me, I would even six four and seven. Uh, I would. I I feel it in groups of four bars. So I don't like maybe thirteen one. I don't know because this is, but like feeling, you know, like feeling it that way with this kind of beat, and this is how I composed the. The melody on top. Uh, right, but you're tapping in quarter notes. Uh, half notes. Oh, half notes, okay. Yeah. So to me, um, right, half notes. So that's, a, yeah, okay, that would make it a four bar. Okay. <laughs> well, then six and, uh, or half notes would be three and uh, three and a half. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I just think that the way you wrote the melody, mm-hmm. It, it comes across like that, so when I see something like that, it feels like it's um, just more difficult okay. to, to, to read because it's yeah. based on where you're putting the weight mm-hmm. of the phrases, the melodic phrases, the bass. Yeah. You know what I mean as yeah. well? It's definitely more difficult to read the singing part. That's why, actually, for the singers, I wrote a completely different chart. So for the piano and the bass, this is, I, unless I separate it into six and seven, this would be like the easiest way of. Not okay. you know, not showing all the four bars at at once. You, you, yeah, you know what I hear you. Mm-hmm. I just think it's, yeah. it would have been easier to read if it was six mm-hmm. and seven. <laughs> all right. But that's just you know what I'm here for mm-hmm. to tell you what I think. Um, and the only other you know thing that I want to say mm-hmm. <laughs> is um, like knowing you over this year, I feel like you didn't necessarily present in, in this presentation the passion that you have that I've felt from you over the year. So, I mean, it's just something to think about mm-hmm. because you presented it so, I guess, I don't know if the word is, you know, like, like an academic or, yeah. uh, <laughs> you know, it was perfect. Your mm-hmm. presentation was perfect. I really, you know, I didn't have to really say anything. But the problem with that is I, I didn't feel it from you. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I don't feel your passion about this music. Yeah. And I know just from knowing you, I feel like that you have that passion. Mm-hmm. So you have to you know, convey that you know, when you're talking about it, uh, even to people that you know or, you know. Yeah. Because it makes me look at it like a science project mm-hmm. opposed to you know, music that's coming from you know, a human being that's connected yeah. to humanity so it's something just something to, to think about thank but you so congratulations much. you, you thank wrote you. some really amazing and challenging music and it was a pleasure to listen to it thank you very much thank you terry uh since bruno is not here uh chase would you like to uh say something that's so funny that you said that terry that last comment because i that was my exact question I was just gonna about to ask you, how did you feel in, in this process with, maybe you could talk a little bit about some of the music. Composing or playing it, recording? Or the Bo- entire both thing. listening, interacting, because you did your re- right, you did research and you're g- getting into the music, listening to different things mm-hmm. and then drawing influences. What was that process like? How did it, how did it feel? Um, well, there were things that came more naturally to me, um, certain pieces. And then there were pieces that I was really having a hard time kind of finding something that I connected to. Um, but once I did, you know, just also being in this environment with these amazing people, uh, teachers and classmates, um, helping me, you know, if I had some questions uh, harmonically, rhythmically. Um, but I think overall this experience has been incredible. Uh, I never, never did, never put myself to do such a project, and um, 
there were definitely some challenges. The Moroccan piece was, it took me a very long time to, to come up with, uh, with the different parts. Um, but I think eventually it was, it was a really good experience and I think I learned a lot from it. Mm, I, that, that sounds, that sounds wonderful. And I, I wonder if that question might lead you to connect to finding those threads, mm. you know, like what, what is it about that particular groove do I resonate with or those types yeah. of harmony or whatever it is, you know, like find what are those elements that really you're like, oh, you're getting inspired by that like, yeah. triggers that feeling. And you, I, for me, at least when I've personally gone through that kind of journey, mm -hmm. that's where I found the most insightful connections between all those things. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you. Tomer, um, I feel because, you know, you're, we were out with time, I, I would like to hear a little bit more about what you think to do after. Maybe you can go back to, yeah, the, sure. to that slot. And particularly uh, with the educational part, what, what are you exactly thinking? Uh, I, when we travel and uh, you took the class, I, you're really talented uh, as a teacher. So I'm very interested what kind of idea you have is um, connected to mm -hmm. this uh, project in particular. Well, th this was uh, an idea that came pretty recently because um, I was struggling to, to see how I use this outside, you know? And then um, I thought about how, to me, this process was great and I feel like there's so much I can take from it and keep taking from it if I do some more research. Just th this idea of like going to your background because it feels at home and then finding these things that entice you and, and researching them. And so I feel like if I were presented with that in high school, let's say, you know, that, that could really drive a certain fire in me to do that kind of research. And uh, presenting, uh, presenting that in, in different schools, I think would be, would be a great thing uh, for me. And not, not, I don't feel like only musically, I think in general, you know, like looking back at, looking at, back at your, ancestries and, and realizing where you come from and connecting to that could be very beneficial for anyone. And you know, connected to this comment, then I, my, my encouragement, especially because you seem to be such a gifted composer and, and you have such a, a way of hearing harmonies and melodies, mm -hmm. which I really enjoyed in listening to this Thank project. You. I think maybe the next step will be dealing with the, you know, the folkloric aspect of each of these uh, mm -hmm. places where you come from and maybe dig deeper yeah. in, in the folk and see if that could be, uh, you know, your nice sources for inspiration for your composition. Mm -hmm. But I really enjoy your music a Thank lot. Thank you very much. Thank you. I want to follow up on that and, uh, and Terry made a, a great point. I think I, I'm going to take credit on, on, the, on, the, on the beat in there because I think you might have gotten com confused the last presentation you did that we talk about go scientific on it. Yeah. And you really went scientific, so I want to applaud that. <laughs> so, so I really want to applaud it. That really is amazing. Uh -huh. The presentation, I don't know if you many remembers, you really, did, that's amazing, the transformation. Even the music, you know, the things that you rescue out. I want to give you a lot. You're a brave man, man. I mean, you really save, I know that, that you, that you uh, really work at it. And, and I just love this thing about you. There's always a question mark with answers. Mm. It's they're resonating at the same level all the time. And you're shifting. It's like you're shifting all the time. But I encourage you to, I think, Terry, that's what he got. I said, go scientific because he was going to the stream. So there's a balance in there, as Neil deGrasse Tyson. We want science to be understood by everybody. Mm. We want science to be felt. We want music to be more human. You know, mm -hmm. if you just add a little more of like, yeah. you know, you know what I'm, okay. Okay, we get it there. So, you know, but I want to congratulate you. Um, I want to I tell you, there's one part in the A3, I don't remember what song was it, A3. that you come back to the C minor, that could have kept going right. Do you remember what tune? I don't, it was like the one with the, uh, it was in C minor. And it, Oh, okay, 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 okay. The the back, the back. Is yeah, part. this one. Okay, yeah. Yeah, dude, there's a return right there. No, 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 it's not that right there. there Another page. Go. Next there page. Go. Next page, right there. It returns eight, right there, right, and then the corner right there, and that, 
right or left? Right, right there in the right. Come down, come down, come down, come down. Right there. Yeah. yeah, when you hit that E, that could have kept going. You can go right. Everybody knows about the dark and light. You could have come before you get to that mm. dark. So think about that one right there. Open the door. You open, it's an exit there. All right. You know, you. and you brought it back. It's like I almost. Not enough? No, I think it could go more right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep going. All right. Don't Thank close you so the door. <laughs> I, I, I really, I really loved, loved that. It could be the same material, maybe another key, uh -huh. like, a, or maybe half step. Or the rhythmic. You're talking about this rhythmic thing, right? No, I, I'm talking about the color. Like you go back to C minor. You see how in my yeah, ears yeah. kind of go back to that mm -hmm. color. Here you open the door. That E natural open doors to go yeah, yeah, yeah. to keep going, mm -hmm. keep going that direction. Um, experiment with it. You know that keep opening the door. I have been telling you all year that you have s this aesthetic about dressing that is very unique. <laughs> Roy Haynes had that aesthetic too. Mm. And I'd say play like that. Mm. And I want to congratulate you because I have started hearing those, those, those colors on the drums <laughs> in an abstract way. You're playing like you're dressing now. It's cool. <laughs> it's a keep going like that. It's a, a certain aesthetic that and my last thought I want to leave you with, which I think is, remember, you, you have this thing, you know, and, and I, I got to take responsibility. Sometimes we envision something and we want people to go into the dream, but we don't break it down enough so people can digest it. And mm -hmm. there is a process. Yeah. And you always, you're always using word like, is it easy? This is it. This is simple. And it is awkward. Mm. You know what I mean? Dun, 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 yeah. dun. And you're like, no, this is it. And it's just play. Yeah. And just remember that the most important thing for everybody and for you, and I said it this morning, information is, is a form of education, the way we are. It's important, and it's a form of intelligence. But mm -hmm. don't leave out intuition. Think about if intuition to you is a form, form of intelligence. Mm. And that's it. I want to say congratulations. It's ama amazing, so amazing work and amazing growth. Thomas, congratulations. Thank you.